Friends, we finally moved and we're starting our homestead from scratch. In this video, we're going to share some of the challenges we've had so far. We're also going to share what this property has to offer. And we're also going to share our plans to make this fully functioning with systems running smoothly for efficiency and preparedness. <music> So first off, I just want to personally apologize. We haven't been able to put out content and for good reason. I started a job three months ago and I was commuting four and a half hours on the weekends to be with my family and staying uh, at my workplace during the week. So for the past three months, it's been really hard to put out content. But now that we found our place, we are together and we're ready to start back. So talking about challenges, the first challenge that we faced in this move was finding a property in the first place. And we're actually first time home buyers. So this was all new to us and we didn't really realize uh, how long the process could potentially take. Also the logistics of moving um, in this move was really unique for us because this was the first time that we were actually making a long distance move with our animals. And so trying to figure out how we were going to move everyone and everything needed um, definitely made for a challenging, definitely made for a challenge, not to mention that there's not fencing, um, on all of the property. Um, yeah, that's been a challenge. Another thing was moving, uh, we didn't actually have, we haven't had a washer and dryer, so that's been a challenge, uh, as well. And we've had some backup systems for that that we'll share with you. Also, the, um, fridge the house came with a fridge and the fridge wasn't working. So it came with a non-functioning fridge. The freezer's working fine, the fridge isn't. And my husband has repaired um, our fridge in the past, um, a previous fridge that we had, and he did diagnostics on this. And um, anyways, this one is posing more of a challenge, but I am excited to having a working fridge again. I know he's going to get that up and running for us. The other thing was the walls needed a lot of prep um, work to paint and some flooring needs to be done. So just things like that to make it a little more livable um, were unexpected but have been taking up a lot of our time. The final and probably <laughs> worst part um, of our unexpected situations was that when we moved in, our well water um, was kind of orange, which we have a um, a pond that they've started here, but the, the pond is kind of, has a red or, or orange tinge to it. The soil is very much clay here. A lot of it is clay. And that's what was kind of coming through. That same orange tinge was coming through our, um, our drinking water, <laughs> all the our water wa in the house. house water. So it was a simple fix, but when I went to replace or check out the filter, it, it was non-existent. There wasn't a sediment filter in there it was just empty so we put one in and that was fixed so we want to talk about why this property why we settled on this particular one we have another video about things to look for in a country property that you might want to check out so this particular property we were really excited about the privacy the privacy and the open views that we have here were amazing and mm -hmm. something we were really excited about we also have a fair amount of trees fair amount of pasture and grass um, for the animals. A well um, that has good tasting water. Right, good water, uh, good pressure, a really good well. It also has uh, adequate garden space as well for our garden. So some more things that the property had were a couple fruit trees, it also has a nut tree, I believe it's a walnut tree. And then there's also a pond that had been started the previous home owner started it, but the machinery broke down. But those are things on the land that we were really excited about. And also wild berries. I don't know if I mentioned that. I think some blackberries scattered throughout the um, property. And it's actually 10 acres in total. Most of it is sloping, um, but it, it's functional for us. Another benefit of the property is the accessibility that we have. Because my husband does commute right now, he has about a 20 minute drive to work. We're only on a gravel road for about a quarter of a mile and it is really the perfect amount of accessibility. We're out here, we are in uh, 
pretty private area, um, but yes. we're able to get to town easily when we need to. Something else that we were excited about was that the house does have a um, fireplace. Ideally, we would like a wood stove, but but the fact that we can heat with wood as is right now, it really makes us, um, it puts us at ease. So to be a little transparent, we actually feel really vulnerable right now. We've spoken in past videos about having systems for backup, but right now those systems aren't in place and relying heavily on electricity. Yeah, um, one thing for me is not having um, any type of well pump that we can use when we lose electricity. We do have the pond, as we said, um, so we can get water from there, um, although it is pretty shallow. Yeah, shallow and muddy. That is something that's a top priority for us. So let's get into what we want to do on this property. So for our plans, the first thing is trying to get a barn up. Winter is coming and we'd like a structure that we could put our goats and chickens in that's a little heftier than what we have them in now. Getting either a solar or a hand well pump um, onto our well is something that's really going to make me feel a lot more at ease. I'd really like to get propane here as fast as possible. Um, just because you can run so many different things off of the propane and have a good sized tank um, to last you through power outages. That's right. We really want to have a propane stove um, that doesn't require any electricity. That would be our ideal. Um, we also want a dryer that's run by propane, a gas dryer, clothes dryer. Eventually we'll transition to a tankless hot water heater and that could be run off of the propane as well. So those would be the, the main things run from pro propane. We also need to put some fencing up. Now where we're living actually Three sides of the property is fenced because we are surrounded by cow pastures, but the whole front of our property isn't fenced at all. So that is something that we need to get up. The other thing is a wood stove. So we have the fireplace. It's on one end of the house and probably won't sufficiently heat the whole house. So we'll put a, a wood stove right in the middle that um, would be ideal. And we could cook off of that and use that. Yeah, right now having this one, it's great in case the power did go out. We would have the opportunity to be able to heat with wood, um, and that's fine for backups, but it's, we'd like to heat with wood exclusively as much as possible. Right, and a wood stove is just a lot more efficient than a fireplace. We really need to get our garden up and running. We have actually planned to start planting our garlic as soon as we got in here, and we haven't done it. Um, we're still going to try to plant our garlic. We'll see how it goes. Um, I mean, it's been very mild weather here, right. and I think we're going to have a pretty mild winter. We have to get compost. Right now we haven't had the time to, and the goats haven't been here long enough to start a good composting system, so we'll have to bring in some compost for our beds. Um, also, we want to get some fruit trees planted in the spring and we want to get some berry bushes. Um, we'd like to really get a, a good amount of each. Yeah, it's nice to have a lot of your food growing on the property and fruit trees, nuts, garden. Yeah, especially having like the berries and the fruit trees. That's something that's just going to perpetuate year after year. Also, with the garden, we want to have our systems for water. And that reminds us of a rain catchment system that we want to get up as soon as possible. Um, we'll probably put that on our house since that's the only roof structure we have currently. But as we build the shop, the barn, we could probably, not probably, we'll potentially use those for rain catchment as well. So some of the things that we've done so far, um, not having a washer and dryer, um, it has actually really been fun. Um, our one of our sons suggested that we just don't get a washer and dryer and because he said he just felt so much more self-sufficient um, not relying on those but being able to just do the laundry with our hands and we're pretty excited about our laundry system that we have been using temporarily and we're glad to have a backup laundry system yeah we're going to be doing a video on the laundry system that we have and we're really excited about it um so i'm not sure how temporary it's going to be but for now we're having a lot of fun and regardless we're glad that we have it all up and running and we got some mousers we had mentioned early in the video that this is our first home that we've actually purchased and we wanted to be encouraging to those of you who are still renting and maybe looking to buy but 
you know, these things can be done at rental properties. We've done it for the past 10 years. We've learned a lot of skills. We've tried a lot of things all on places that we did not own. With that being said, it can be done. But at the same time, we are super excited about having our own place and being able to do exactly what we want to do on it when we want to do without having to ask anybody to do it. It feels a lot different to me um, being on our own land and in our own house. Um, in the past, we've done a lot of um, gardening and things like that. And though I enjoy it and though I've seen the importance of it, it is not the same as doing it on our property. Um, in the past, when we did pasture moves, I did it because it was something that needed to be done. And I knew it was like good for the animals, it was saving us money, but it wasn't so much about building up the soil. And now when we go out and we're doing the pasture moves, it's exciting to see what the animals have eaten down, the work that they're doing um, on our property. It just feels so much different. And it's really been um, a huge blessing. I'm glad that she's glad about wanting to do the rotational grazing. So, so we've had to really be creative with the things that we've had when it comes to our animals and keeping them here. We don't have any outbuildings, but what the property did, ha did have specifically for the goats was a 10 by 10 chain link kennel. So the goats have been sleeping in that. We put straw down and then we put a tarp over the top. And that works great for them. They're content in there at night. It's, again, temporary. But during the day, we're able to get them out and we put them in the electric netting um, and move them with the chickens. So it's not ideal. It's not long term. But really, um, like you can do a lot of things with what you have on hand. You just need to be creative and you need to be willing. We really wanted to just be encouraging to those of you out there and let you guys know how things were going um, in a move with animals and challenges and all these things that we're facing uh, to persevere. And it's all really worth it in the end. Yeah, it's unlikely. Um, I mean, for most people, you're not going to move on to your ideal property. You're not going to have everything that you envision um, in that property. Um, Unless maybe you have a lot of money and you're able to do that. But for the rest of us, um, like there are sacrifices that need to be made. And also the Lord blesses um, when you're willing um, to move where he's calling you. So if you're thinking about moving, maybe you haven't had the opportunity yet. Continue to pray about it. Continue to look for the right place. And the door will open at the right time in the right place. And you will be so happy and be willing to live with whatever challenges come your way um, as well. Make the most of it. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye.